Hello guys and welcome back to another video today. So I'm going to be doing a Battlefield 2042 sensitivity and settings video. I'm going to be covering everything in this video all the way from general all the way through to extras. Uh, even though there's not much on the extras, we're going to go through everything and just explain as much as I can. Just before we get started, I will say that these are my settings. All settings are personal preference. However, I'm going to go over a few things that will help you on the battlefield. I personally play on a controller, so you won't be seeing any mouse and keyboard settings on this video. But nevertheless, you might learn something new that will help you with your gameplay drastically. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. As for general, it's pretty standard, guys. Crossplay is obviously it's natural. It's default on on console, but you can't really change it at this point in time. If you play with people that are on PC, you will just go into a game with PC players. However, uh, that's entirely up to you whether you want to enjoy the crossplay experience or not. Uh, controller hints, we also have off and the rest are on. Pretty simple. Moving on to display, this is a very important page. Field of view. I would say don't have this anything below 90. I would say the same for any FPS game. I recommend that you always have that. Not at the max 100 is good but i find 90 to be perfect you don't want things to be too far away from you at 100 i find 90 just to be the sweet spot as for vehicle third person field of view put that to the very top there is no reason to have that at anything other than the top you want to be able to see the maximum amount of space around the vehicle when infantry are trying to run at you chuck c4 at you there's just no advantage to having this low having it at the top even if it does feel weird if you're not used to it you will adjust Trust me, there is no other way to play this setting. As for ADS field of view, obviously you have that on. This is default off, I believe, but having ADS field of view on gives so much more benefit to you. Not only does it feel like you have less recoil, giving the illusion of you being further away from your gun, but you still get the benefits of the zoom optic on any site that you use. It just overall works much, much better than having it off. Having it off just feels clumsy and it makes your recall feel like it kicks a bit more than it does. And you might find that you actually will win a lot more gunfights with this on. So turn it on, guys. Just do it. Moving on to brightness settings. And this goes for all of your individual monitors. But I've got mine at just a standard 50. Motion blur. Every game ever. Turn that off. Not only can it make you feel sick in games, but it's just horrible. You can't see enemies around you clearly when you're turning and spinning. Uh, there is no need to have motion blur on um, as for these next three settings i just keep them on as for the lens at the bottom there have that off you don't really need that on hud settings and this is a this is quite a mix batch of loads of different things so we'll go down them one by one as for your hud obviously you're gonna have that on and with your hud prompts these two you just need on uh, control hints if you're new to the game you'll have this on other than that turn it off you don't want extra things popping up screen that you don't need with unnecessary uh, pop-ups and just nonsense on the screen as for this one keep this on this is goes for when you need to reload whether it be your stim pistol your primary your sidearm choppers the lot you always need to know that little prompt pop on the screen that you need to reload because you're not going to be able to constantly keep looking down at the right hand corner all the time going over and looking to make sure that you've got enough ammo in your mag once you see that x button or if you see the the r button or the r key on the keyboard you're gonna want to be able to reload not always obviously lmgs will tell you to reload and you've got like 30 bullets left in a mag which there's no need to do but when you get really low, it's just a prompt that pops up, allows you to look quickly to your bottom right and adjust and see if you need that reload. As for HUD mo uh, motion, I don't really find it does much, but I have turned it off just because you want to keep the HUD there, stationary and easily seeable at all times. So there's not much point in really having it on. As for camera shake amount, just like motion blur, turn that down as much as you can. Unfortunately, you can't turn it off. Um, obviously it would be pretty OP if you could have it off and some people had it on with explosions going on around you. But just to give you as bad, best of an opportunity as possible over anyone else, chuck that down to 50. It's always best to have it on the lowest. Fucking chopper killing me. I'm trying to make a video. <gasps> Soldier compass. That is a needed. Not only if you're playing with a team where you're giving out call outs, but if you're playing hazard zone, that is a must, and the compass is just a great tool in general. Have it on. Fire mode indicator, when available, 
Um, I, yeah, just keep that there. There's no need to really change it. Show vehicle seat, of course. You always want to know where you are, even if you are not sure in some vehicles. It's just beyond helpful. Have it on. Moving down to the colorblind mode. You can play around with this, even if you aren't actually colorblind. But this is going to come down to ultimately your eyes and what you prefer. Um, I keep the squad at green. Friendlies at blue and enemies at red. It's just a standard thing for every game, really, now. Uh, it just makes sense. It's easy to see apart. I wouldn't really change that. Other than, obviously, if you do struggle with your eyesight look to change the one that you prefer moving down to the kill log this one's pretty straightforward you're always going to want to have a kill log on i recommend just leaving it to squad that way just for self-satisfaction you can see how many kills you get rather than losing them within the kill feed you don't need to be seeing loads and loads and loads of names popping up especially with battlefield being 128 players on screen at a time if you have that to everyone you or even nearby there's loads you can do with it but you either just want to have squad or yourself but i have the squad that way if you are working together and you're in a certain area and you think there's a guy there you know there's a guy going around the corner and your teammate might pop him off if you don't have squad on you won't know that he's confirmed the kill or not so just have that on it makes it easier for you and your team especially if you have a group of friends moving on to crosshairs 100 percent Always, your crosshairs are vitally important in any game. Uh, crosshair protection, I have that off. Thickness at default, it doesn't really seem to change much from thick to default. And obviously, you don't really want it on thin. You want to be able to see it. So, default in the middle is perfect. Changing your crosshair color. I have mine at white, but I, I would recommend you guys trying light green. Light green is a very popular color used uh, just across the board in most FPS games now. I guess it's just a way of having it a bit lighter and it stand now. It can come sometimes blend in with some lighter surfaces, but same goes for white. That's going to come down to what your eyesight yet again prefers. But white, generally, you don't really need to stray away from unless you really wanted to give another color a go. Hit indicator, um, yeah, 100 yet again. You want to know when you're hitting people. The hit markers are beautiful in Battlefield and really satisfying. Just keep them on. Hit color, I leave that at white. And the headshot color is also white. The kill color is red. You can mess around with this if you really, really like and have a different headshot color to hit in uh, hit color. In the beta, they did have it so the headshot color was orange. But you do see thicker hit markers appear when you hit the head. So ultimately, it's not really needed. But it is there if you do want to make sure you know you're hitting the head guaranteed. Especially if you're getting a lot of did I hit him, did I not kind of situations. Armor broken hit indicator. You definitely want this on, especially for people that are running armor a lot. Just to know that you've definitely taken them down. And also you don't get the frustration of thinking you've hit a guy a hundred times and he's not got armor on and he's not dead. And of course, I keep that color to blue. It makes sense with the fact that the line and the bar when you get armor is also blue. For the last few settings here, I just keep thick and yet again, red. And yellow pretty standard moving on to mini map i have my mini map background uh at 90 i don't really put it on 100 i think 90 is just nice it doesn't really need adjusting from there rotate with view i have on there's a lifesaver in games and then for the rest i have 50 120 and 200 i find these to be very nice and i haven't really adjusted these now sound i'm going to cover briefly because it's not really all that important all i would say is music and in-game announce so you don't really need these on but if you want music on for the sake of it if you like it and you want a bit more immersion and you're not too fast you can go ahead and have that on but i would always say in most games take away the announcers they just talk a load of rubbish in your ear that you don't really need to know at the end of the day you're just running from objective to objective and shooting people along the way it's not really that important unless of course you're not that type of person that picks up on visuals in the game as much and more audio subtitles pretty standard on or off your choice now this is the part of the video where a lot of you have clicked on it and this is the part i'm going to go over in more in depth and give you a little bit on my thoughts and what you can do to help you improve your settings with these as well as what you would personally like and how to find your sensitivity and settings not just copying me but how you can get around finding yours without too much hassle and doing it in a quicker time frame. See controls I put to custom. I have changed a few things around that I recommend that you do. Now, one of them being, as you can see on the bottom right hand corner there, I've changed my ability on my operators to RB. This is a lifesaver if you're playing on a standard controller and even an elite controller. When you're running around in the action 
and you really need to activate your stim pistol, especially as Falk, it's so much easier to be able to keep your left thumb on the stick, sprinting around, and just constantly being able to heal, get back in cover. Holding the D-pad to the left was a nightmare. I much prefer having hold left on the D-pad for my ammo crate. And then if I needed to pop a sensor, I quickly hit the right on the D-pad. It's in my hands. You chuck one, you chuck another one. Job done. You're back in the action. Moving on to the global ones. Obviously, you want this on custom again. These four I have off and then on and on. Control of vibration, you might want to turn off. I keep it on as just me, what I prefer personally. But if you're going by any really good controller players, right, history, pro players, the lot, they always have control of vibration off. It's just that thing in the back of your brain subconsciously where if your controller's vibrating, sometimes your brain focuses on your hands. But I've been playing games for 20 years and I just am so used to concentrating on the game, I don't notice it. And I just leave it on. It makes me feel a lot more in control and actually holding the weapon. That's just my opinion, though. Now for the most important part, the sensitivity aspect of the game, okay? So, soldier aim sensitivity. I run mine at 65. I find this to be a really good sweet spot. If you like a fast-ish sensitivity, but not too fast, being able to snap a little bit more to your targets, 65 is a very nice spot to be in. Considering you can go over all the individual sights and different zooms, if you want to try this sensitivity, all of my zoom sensitivities that I'll show you in a minute are perfect for this. If you don't want to run 65 and you want to find a perfect sense for you, the best possible way you can do this in any game is to start from the very middle. Start at 50 and work your way up in twos. Play again if it's too slow, up it by two. Play a bit more, up it by two. And the easiest way you can do that is just by playing against the bots, guys. Like, you can go into the matchmaking, play a conquest game against just the bots, and use them as target practice. Invert vertical look on foot? No. <laughs> Some people can do this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't try it. It's just not worth your time. Moving on to the aim assist. I don't find it to be all that strong in Battlefield, the same with Halo Infinite. It is on the weaker scale of aim assists if you've played other first-person shooters like Call of Duty where it is ridiculous. I would leave it at 100. Uh, it gives you that little bit of help in hand, but you don't really notice it. In fact, in Battlefield, you don't really at all. But I would keep it on 100 just for that little bit of help, especially if you're playing crossplay. Soldier aim assist snap zoom, however. This I did change. I put this to halfway because when it's at the highest snap, I find it to be really inconsistent and a bit odd. It, it snaps the targets that you're near rather than the ones that you're aiming at. Moving on to movement. Now, movement is huge in games. And when it comes to sprinting, you do not want it on hold. Click, keeping your thumb pressed down for ages is just unnecessary. Click, much better. It's just the standard for every game that's FPS. You don't need to change it. Double tap forwards yet again, off, and the key bind. I use my left stick. You guys, if you use paddles and you really don't like using the left stick, you can move it, I guess. But the left stick has just always been a standard sprint button on controller. So, yet again, you just don't need to move it. Sprint to vault, over. I have it off. If I'm going to vault, I want to choose when to vault. There's no need to really have it where you're sprinting and you just kind of want to get in cover and you find yourself jumping into the enemy. Yeah, you don't want that situation to ever happen, so it's best to leave this off. But the same principle with the general sensitivity. Put it to the middle, and up it slowly, or take it down slowly. Play with it, experiment. It's the only way you'll find your perfect sense. But if you really, really, really want to try mine, go ahead. Nothing stopping you. You might like it. Parachute auto deploy, I have off. You want to be able to activate that when you want, especially in Battlefield, considering you can go fairly low before you activate it. As for the air spawn parachute auto deploy, I have that on because if you're spawning on a teammate that's in a parachute, like, and he's in the air, if he's low and you spawn and you just fall and die, that can be quite annoying, right? So just as a safety precaution, I have it on, and you can always double tap the B button and undeploy that parachute and then dive a little bit if you needed. This is just a little bit of a safety precaution. I would recommend having that on. It does help out a lot. Quick throw grenades. I have that off. If you want to get your grenade out, you put it in your hand and then you adjust the throw perfectly. If you're going to have it on, you're basically going to press the D-pad or whatever button it is to get the grenade and then you just throw. I can see it being useful very rarely. If you're going to throw a grenade, 
you know you're going to do it, right? Take your time, get behind cover, put it in your hand, adjust the angle, then throw it. You'll get a much better consistency rating, and you'll be able to land it exactly where you want it, rather than just throwing it by pressing a button and hoping it lands near someone. Aiming left, right acceleration, zero. Never have aiming acceleration on. Aiming acceleration just makes it so when you're starting to move towards a target, your brain is naturally adjusting to the speed it goes immediately. And if you have it so over time it speeds up, you're going to swing past your target too much. And it's just a hassle. You need that at zero, just like motion blur. Turn it off immediately. Now, the very, very important bit of the game. This took me a while to do, and there's so many different sights, and I'm going to show you how you can adjust these better very fast. The quickest way you can do your sights in this game, with all the different sensitivities, is to have the sights go up in zoom, and then adjust them. So I have a times 6 out for my sniper, then the times 8, then the times 10. And all you want to do is you can play around with them, but if you want to take less time, spin in a circle without aiming, then aim down your sights, then spin in a circle. Once you get the sights so they are very similar sensitivity to your general sense, but not as fast, just a little bit less, that is when it's perfect. Play around with them for yourself and do the tip that I just gave you, spin in a circle. Yes, it might make you a little bit dizzy, but just focus on the center of the screen, Focus on the speed when you aim, spin around a couple of times, aim, spin around a couple of times. Once it's very similar, you've got a good sense. There's not much I can really do in terms of just show you what I run on all of them and give you the advice I've given you on how to sort yours out. I hope you guys find your perfect sense with these. If you want to try mine, do it. You might like it. If not, just take the time, adjust them play against bots, you'll get there. So guys, I hope this video has helped you in some way, shape or form. I've gone through absolutely everything I can possibly think of. I really do hope that it's helped you. You've probably clicked on so many videos in the past saying this is the best sensitivity. There simply isn't one until you find yours, but I've given you tips and tricks on how to find everything easier for you, as well as all the scopes. Other than that, guys, if this video helped you at all, or you found something that you didn't know before, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new. I really do appreciate it. Hope everyone has a lovely morning, evening, wherever you are around the world. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time.